God bless you, everyone. This is Prophetess Kimberly Moses. Good to see you. Uh, let me know where you're watching from so I can shout you guys out. Today, we are continuing our series, It Cost Me Everything, out of our new book. This is the book, you guys. It Cost Me Everything. You can get the book on Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, iBooks, and some other platforms. I hope this interview, you guys, or these interviews are blessing you out there, blessing you. Amen. Let's see who gets, let's see what we got on here. Let's see who we got on here today. You know, let me know where you're watching from so I can shout you guys out. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm excited for uh, this this move of God today. Okay, Kentucky. Thank you for sharing, Miss Cindy. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. So, you guys, how you doing? Good to see you, Lenore. I haven't seen you before. Good to see you. All right, I'm trying to wait for um, the guest of the hour uh, so I can add her. Good to see you, Denise. Amen. I'm excited, you guys. So, in November, we're ha having our third annual Empowering the New Me conference. How you doing, Miss Wanda's in the house. So, we're having our conference. How you doing, Princess? And I tell you guys, you need to register. It's going to be a move of God. You need to register. You know, last year, God did so many miracles. And, you know, I can't wait to see what God does this year. So, you go to my website, and you can go register, go to Prophet, and, you know, sign up it's going to bless you guys amen so i'm getting ready to add my guests and we're talking about domestic violence tonight and this is going to bless you because uh some of you guys you've been there you know i've been there you know and uh this woman of god she has a powerful testimony so we're trying to get her on and try to connect her um and it says adding prop uh, prophetess let's see i don't know if you're single good but here she goes Oh, God bless you. Good to see you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? How are you doing? Good, 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 good. So I'm glad that you are in here. So everyone, I definitely miss. Yeah, it, it sounds like it's a delay, but you know, to God be the glory. We're going to get, we're going to push through. Okay, I say shout Amen. Out so if y'all can do me a favor, y'all share because this is going to bless you. So I have a uh, prophetess, you know, Joy in here. Oh, she got disconnected, but she'll come right back on. You know, we're going to get ready to get started. This is going to bless you guys. Yay. So I'm excited. Uh, some of you guys are in a horrible relationship. Some of you guys are being abused. And this is going to bless you. This is going to help you in so many ways. I've been abused, and I've been the abuser, just to be honest. You know, but uh, to God be the glory. But here she comes. So I'm adding her back on. You um yes, I'm excited. There you go. There we go. You're back on. <laughs> Good. Yes, so back about on. The Sorry ministry. about the disconnect. It's okay. Say that again. Tell us a little bit about you and the, your ministry. Yes, yes. Um I've been in ministry for many years, almost 10, 15 years. But the last two years, I've gone into a different um, ministry as far as pastoring. I've been doing itinerant preaching, traveling all over the place. Uh, but the Lord has allowed me to settle down and plant a church in the Philadelphia area, Bethel Ministry Center. So That's awesome. So what's the name of your church in the Philly area? It's called Bethel Ministry Center. And we're, in, we're located in North Philadelphia, in the North Philadelphia area. Ecstatic about what God is doing. You have a, you have a webinar coming up, right? Yes. Yes, I have a webinar coming up. It's called God's Armor Bear. I served as an armor bear for many years in a house prophet. Um, before the Lord allowed me to launch on my own. And a lot of people that are in ministry are so not aware of the call um, that comes along with the role of being an armor bearer. You know, how to serve your leaders, how to have the heartbeat of your leaders. It's just like being in marriage and to be able to protect them, guard them, cover them in prayer. I think a lot of people just think um, it's, a, it's a position to be seen a lot of people think you just walk around and 
carry Bibles and waters. And it's so much bigger than that. It's so much deeper than that. And so to be able to do a training to teach people so they can prepare, so they understand the sacrifice that you're making that a lot of people don't talk about. Yes. And how can I sign up for that, your webinar? Uh, yes. If you go to um, uh, paypalme.com, forward slash Pastor Joy Martin. And the registration is only $28. So I made it very affordable for everyone to actually attend the webinar. It's two different classes. One is on Tuesday nights and April the um, 9th and the 16th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I have another one on Saturday. The same information will be taught. And that will be on a Saturday class, Saturday Okay, okay. Good. So y'all sign up. Y'all connect. Amen. With uh, Prophetess Pastor Joy. She's going to bless you guys. And sign up for her webinar. And uh, we'll put her information in the comment section uh, shortly. Um, so you wrote about domestic violence uh, in our book. It cost me everything. Can you tell us what that is? Can you, uh, is the connection good on your end? Choppy. Yeah. Can y'all hear, um, Pastor Joy? Let me know if you've been, um, if you can hear her. Did y'all hear her okay? Good evening. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, I'm going to give her a second to come back in. Yeah, we lost her, but her connection was really choppy. How you, how you doing, Jessica? Yes. Yeah, I, it was a delay or something. I don't know, but we're going to push through this. You know, the enemy don't want this word to get out because it's going to be powerful. You know, uh, some of you guys, y'all been, been in marriages. Somebody, you're, you're being abused right now. Uh, somebody, um, you, you get violent and you lash out and you want to hit. But that is not the way of God. Amen. It's not the way of God. I am good. I'm just getting over a little cold. Yeah. Um, but I'm pushing through. Amen. I thank God for a faithful team. I thank God for some intercessors. Uh, that stood in the gap for me. I thank God for my beautiful, handsome husband uh, that helps me so I can get some rest. Um, so yeah, yeah, she she uh, is not on right now. She's coming back. Yeah, and it's it, it's a delay. It's a delay, but we're gonna push past this. We're gonna push past this thing. So we're gonna get her back on here. Yeah. So any anywho, guys. But yeah, this this right here. Um, Domestic violence, it cost me a lot, too. So I'm going to bring her back on here so we can talk about this. So she, I'm adding her back right now. But I thank you guys for your patience. Yes. Come on, distractions. I'm sorry, Pat, for this. It's okay. Distractions. Yeah, so tell us exactly what domestic violence is. Like, what is what, what is it? Yes, domestic violence is any time someone from a loved one, a family member, or a close relative experience any kind of abuse in any form or fashion. It can be verbal abuse, emotional abuse, or it can also be physical abuse. Yeah. But it's at the hands of a partner, a family member, or a great loved one. And you said in your, your chapter that it was uh, detrimental um, or it's like go ongoing. How, how is that? It can be very ongoing for many people. That wasn't the case for myself, per se, but for a lot of people, they are in a situation. They feel like they cannot get out. Yeah. There's no escape. A lot of people are living in fear. They don't know what to do or who they can trust to tell because a lot of shame and embarrassment comes along with um, domestic violence. A lot of embarrassment and shame comes along with that. It's attached Yes. To that, to that violent spirit. Yes. And so a lot of people don't want to talk about it. Yes. And I, I, I've been there and uh, 
2012 and 13, I've been there. Very humiliating, very shameful. And I had to take like 36 Mm. domestic violence classes. 36. Mm. It was was crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You said uh, in your chapter, excuse the background noise, you said according to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, on an average, nearly 20 people per minute, 20 people per minute are physically abused by their intimate partner in the U.S. alone. That's a lot. Yeah. That is frightening. When you think about that, that is frightening. Even um, one of the other statistics for 2017, according to the United Nations, the home was the most dangerous place for a woman. I mean, just, just think about that. The home is the most dangerous place for a woman. So there's no peace. There's no sanctity. The home is not a refuge anymore. You know, for some people, people can't wait to get home. You know, they're excited. Home is a a refuge. Oh, leave all the junk and the good behind. But home is wonderful. But there are many women. They can't stand to be at home, want to get out the house more than anything. And just to think about that's what's going on Mm -hmm. as recent as 2017, that home is the most dangerous place. It's very um, disturbing Mm -hmm. when you really think about it like that. It's not out on the street not out on the corner you know was not running errands it's in it's in your own home and it's sad yeah it's sad Mm -hmm. um the other Mm -hmm. day my husband wrote a status that love don't hit um and many women are people that's in these relationships they feel like oh they love me so they it's okay for them to hit me what would you tell yes that yes love does not look like that love does not look like that and for some people if they grew up in that environment, their loved ones were abused, their parents, their mother was abused. That's a normal way of life yeah. for them. They don't know any other way. They don't know when someone is really nice to them, sincerely pure motives. Mm-hmm. And then if you have someone else that feels like, well, I know it's not love, but at least I'm with somebody. You know, then you have a lot of women who settle. They think, who else is going to want to be with me? Um, I may have kids. Who else is going to take care of me? My man or my husband's taking care of me. And they think that's the best they can do. They think who will want them in their situation or their state. And so it's just a, it's a frame of mind to think that love looks like this and it's okay as long as I'm being loved, even if it's twisted and perverted. Because love does not look like that. Wow. Um, you talked about fear. How does domestic violence cause fear? Fear, and we know in the Bible, you know, we understand that fear is a spirit. Fear attaches itself to a person that's in a domestic violence situation because you're always wondering when when the next blow is going to happen or when the next insult is going to happen. You're always thinking, if I say this, what is he going to do or what is she yeah. going to do? And I don't want to make it all about women because there are many of men. I know men who are in abusive situations. Even if it's not physical, it can be very abusive verbally, very abusive verbally. But most of the time we just focus on women being abused. But there's a fear that goes along with, if I do this, what is he going to do? Or what is he going to say? Or if I try to leave, you know, is my life in danger if I try to leave? If I try to escape, you know, will he take the kids away from me if I leave? So it's just best I just stay put. And a lot of people go through this on a daily basis. Many people go through this on a daily basis. It's very terrifying. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's not the will of God for you to walk on eggshells in your relationship. Mm-mm. You know, Mm-mm. God wants to give you someone or he wants you to you know, be with someone that's going to love you for you, your flaws, your yes. imperfections. And it's yes. like worse than being with somebody, you got to walk on eggshells. And you like a prophetess just said, you know, that you're scared. Like, what is they going to do next? Because, uh-oh, I messed up. And it could be little small things, little triggers that yes. can set somebody off. And they'll, they'll be like a walking time bomb. And they'll just yeah. hit you or just curse you out and all kind of things and destroy your self-worth. And you'll feel like yes. you're nothing. You'll feel like you know, you're the scum on the bottom of the earth, but you don't know any better. Yeah. And you, you, you choose to, to stay with that or you choose to accept that. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it, it's sad. Mm-hmm. Um, you talked about shame, yeah. about how does this cause shame, domestic violence? Because for a lot of people, they, you know, when you grow up, you're not thinking 
that you're going to get involved with a situation like this. Many people are famous for saying, oh, I would never put up with this. I would never, if I was in those shoes, that would never happen to me. And then you discover that you're in that situation. And so then you can't tell anybody that you're in it. You can't believe it. Some people are just in such a shock especially, you know, when the first insult comes or the first hit comes, it's like, I can't believe this just happened. It's like time can stand still for you because you've never, you know, been hit, abused before. And it, shame carries a, a, a weight that can weigh a person down. And you feel like you're all alone. You feel like no one knows what you're going through. You feel like you can't talk and share with anybody. Um, or then you start to feel like shame can also make you feel like it must be my fault in some way. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe um, I made him mad because I didn't have the house clean or I didn't have dinner ready on time or it was because the way that I dress. Shame plays a, a role in people's lives that can have them bleeding on the inside for an extended wow. period of time. Yeah, and um, I was once in a relationship and I was very shameful. I was being... Mm -hmm. emotionally and verbally abused and I was mm -hmm. so shameful because I, I I told people I'm so transparent that yeah I used to be a stripper but this person used that against me and mm -hmm. tried to attack my character and they told the whole the, the whole work environment so and they kept trying to throw my past up in my face and it was shameful and I, I had mm -hmm. low self-esteem during that period in my life and yes. I felt ugly I felt like I wasn't good enough I felt yes. like I was this dirt on the, the earth and I was yes. very ashamed and I, I and it led for me it led to depression you know and I mm -hmm. and I started having like suicidal thoughts and it it was it was bad and then I I decided to get help and along the way I went to counseling mm -hmm. and then God began to Amen. deliver me but yes you you're absolutely right mm -hmm. about the the shame absolutely praise God that you were able to get help yes praise um God. what about bitterness uh, how can domestic violence lead to mm -hmm. bitterness? Bitterness was the, this, that was the, that was like the nail for me. That was the final straw for me because I went through the whole entire process of, um, it was one, it was a one-time event uh, with my son's father. And I went through the whole process of pressing mm -hmm. charges, of going to court. And it was a long process that took almost a year. So by the end of the year, I was mentally exhausted. I was going to court every week. Mm -hmm. um, he would never show up in court. Uh, I had to rearrange my whole life. I had to walk around with the ex parte order, a restraining order. And the police officers, they tell you, you know, if you call us and you don't have this on you, you know, there's really nothing we can do. Wow. But if you have this paperwork on you, you know, then we can help, we can stop, we can do et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this was years ago. And so... I had like five or six different copies. You know, one was there in my purse and my book bag and diaper bag everywhere. Yeah. And so you're always walking in this fear. Um, I had to change my work schedule. I was just doing everything, always looking over my shoulder. And so by the time we went to court and he did, he did not get the sentence that I thought he should have received. Yeah. It was, you know, I thought he should have got more because you put us through this, you put us through this. My whole life has changed. We've, it's been rearranged counseling for my son, everything was haywire. And when he didn't receive the, the verdict that I thought he should have, that's really when the bitterness set in. Yeah. That's when the bitterness set in. Because it's like, I did everything they told me to do. You know, I did what my lawyer told me to do. I did what the police officers told me to do. I did everything and I'm still suffering. My God. I'm still traumatized. And so that's when a anger came over me. Bitterness is dangerous. Yes. Because bitterness, it, it leads to hate. Mm -hmm. Bitterness leads to rage. Mm -hmm. Bitterness can, it can lay underline for a good while, but at some point it's going to be explosive. Yes. And I was at that point where I was, I was explosive by the time, you know, the trial came and just to think you just got probation, you know, that's it. You know, in my mind, I was thinking, oh, he's going to get, you know, X amount of years and he's going to pay for how he made me suffer. And it was probation because he had never been in trouble before. Wow. So the judge was just like, well, you know, you, you made a lapse in judgment. You know, uh, 
you're going to pay for her glasses and you're going to um, go to community service and that was it and that's when the rage and the bitterness really set in prophetess yeah um one time and we're going to go back in a second but you was like um mm -hmm. you wanted him to die and you had a, your boyfriend yeah. at the time uh you was like i don't want to tell you testimony but you was like kill him kill him <laughs> and then i know you had a hard that's time right. to go <laughs> so i've been there like i wanted my ex to die like kill him god kill him yeah <laughs> I've been there, so when I was reading your story, I was like, my God, I was like, I can relate to this thing, so, yeah. <laughs> so, tell us what happened, because it, it seemed like it was, I know it was a one-time incident, but he just, like, flipped, this, this, he just flipped one day, and it was just like, it was a demonic attack, right? It was very demonic, and at that time, I, I didn't understand that. You know, I wasn't going to church, I didn't grow up in church, but I knew he wasn't himself. Yeah. And even though we weren't together anymore, we were still very cordial. We just agreed it's best to be apart. And we're just co-parent, you know, raising our son. No problems. It was fine. And then one day I went to go pick up my son, and it was like I was talking to a different person. And I just kept thinking, what's wrong? Because he was just acting so um, just bizarre, like erratic. Wow. He was acting. And I could look back now, and I can see that was a demon. Yeah. And I remember just looking in his eyes and I kept thinking, you are not the person that I know. But I didn't understand all of yeah. that at that time. And everything, you know, it just happened so fast. I um, I know for some people, it's hard to hear details because it may trigger yeah. some things for some people if they've been in that situation. Um, so I, I, I did pray about it, Prophet. It's about how much to release in the book. Yes, because I know for some people, you, it, it can trigger and it takes them right back, you know, to that moment. So I'm going to be mindful about sharing that here. Yes, ma'am. But um, it was very traumatic. It was very traumatic, um, even though it was one time, but it left a lifetime of scars, you know, for me at that time. And so after that event happened, after the ordeal happened, the abuse, and um, I can just say it was, it was very volatile. You know, but like I said, I didn't understand about demons. I didn't understand, of course, at that time that it was a call on my life, that Satan was using the demons to literally try to take me out. You because said, I really thought. You said you saw say it, it again, in his eyes, right? And that's, in that's his eyes. I, 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 yeah. In his eyes. And it's like, you know how you go look back now, you know more now than you did, you know, 20 yeah. years ago. But I remember staring at him. I mean, we were this close. I mean, he was so close to me. He could have bit my lip off. That's how close in my face he was just screaming and yelling. And I just kept thinking, who are you? Right. You know, you are not the person I was once in love with. You know, you are not the man. We just, you know, we had all these wonderful dreams and visions for our life. You are not this person. And I just couldn't understand what happened mm -hmm. and where he was. But I did not understand um, demonic oppression. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand being demonized or being demon possessed. So it wasn't until years later, I could say. I'll never forget the look on his face. You know, I'll never forget what I saw, you know, in his eyes. And I know that now, but at that time, I had no clue. But I know now it was the enemy because I didn't know, you know, the enemy knows more about some of our lives than we do. Amen. So I had no idea who I was. The enemy knew who I was and was trying to do different things to prevent. Yeah. Because if I did go through with killing him, you know, if I did do that, which I wanted to do in my heart, I wouldn't be talking to you today. I can right. tell you that. It would be a totally, a totally different story. So I, I thank God for that. I thank God for that, that I did not do that. I thank God for that. So you were uh, hearing uh, like the enemy giving you plots and schemes and you, you even, oh, yes. you was going to church too, right? And you felt oh, yes. like a tug, like, you know, God was like kind of dealing with you or tell us about that. Yes, I um so at the time of the domestic violence event, I was not saved. During that year of going back to court each and every Monday, Monday was the day that all domestic violence court cases were heard in Baltimore City. Wow. So every Monday I went to court. And so it was just traumatizing to go through this like you're reliving it. You can't you can't close it, you can't move beyond it. Um, you know, your whole world just stops for a year. So it was very damaging. Mm -hmm. And during that course of the year, um, 
I, I went to church and I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And I knew I confessed. I knew I believed it in my heart, but I still had all of this stuff in my heart. Yeah. I still wasn't, you know, I still wasn't really thinking clearly. Um, so I knew that I meant it, but I honestly never experienced the power of God before. Wow. I never knew that you could hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. So I went to church because I realized this was the right thing to do. So I was going to church every Sunday. I was going to church every Wednesday. I was singing on the choir. I was volunteering at the nursing homes. I was working, serving in the ministries during this, you know, last six months or the, you know, during that year. I was serving and I was working. But I promise you, I was still going home plotting and planning how I was going to kill him. So when people tell me they go to church, that doesn't mean anything to me wow. because I know killers go to church too, mm -hmm. because I had it in my heart to kill. Mm -hmm. And I was just trying to come up with the fullness of the plan. You know, since somebody I was dating at the time wouldn't do it for me, I was trying to find another way to go about it. Yeah. But my, because of that bitterness, I was just like, you can't live. You just cannot live. And think that you could just treat me any old kind of way mm -hmm. and think nothing is going to happen to you. So what I ultimately did, I took God off the throne and I tried to be God by making a decision that I was going to take him out. Oh and so I was going to church on a regular basis, singing, praising God, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I was determined in my heart to kill him or find someone that can. So it's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm not telling you nothing you don't know. There's many a people sitting up in church. They're going to a facility. They're going to an assembly. They're gathering with other people. But they really have never experienced God for themselves. Right. They've never had a true encounter with the living God. They don't know that the word of God can bathe you and wash you. Mm -hmm. Because they haven't been delivered and set free. Because you cannot go to church and still be trying to plot and plan to kill somebody if you have really met Jesus Christ. That's right. Because That's he right. have come to set us free. So I didn't know Jesus, but I was going to church. They're two different things, and I didn't know that. I, did, I didn't have a clear understanding of that. So when people say, I go to church, okay, but do you know Jesus, baby? You know, do you really know him? Is he the is he the lover of your soul? You know, is he your morning star, your each and everything? Is he your everything, the breath that you breathe? Is he your whole life? If that's the case, then you may be all right. But if not, you're going to be dealing with some things that eventually, if you don't deal with them, they're going to deal with you. Yes. And that's the bottom line. They're going to deal with you. My God, that's, that's so, that's powerful to feel anointing. So tell us about the moment where, you know, I don't know if you heard a voice that sounded like he was in your room and you was like plotting, you was pacing the floor. Tell us about that moment, your, your moment of meeting Jesus or meeting God. Yes, yes. It was one night. Uh, it was late in the middle of the night, like two, three o'clock. And I was at the point where I was ready. Cause like I said, it's a year later. Um, and I'm just like, I'm just ready to be done with it. You know, that was my attitude. I'm ready to be done with it. And I had already written everything down in my little composition book. I had my plan together. And I was just waiting for the process because I was looking for a functional junkie. That's what we called them back home. And that's anybody that's on drugs, but they're, they're still sound at a period of time. You know, they're not, they're functional. They have an addiction, but they're functional. So these are not the ones you see standing on the corner limped over. These are the ones that go to work each and every day. And they know what time to stop smoking, what time to stop hitting it, so they can come down off their off their high. And so I was in the process of doing that, and I had my plan all written out, and I was memorizing it because I had planned on burning the book the next day. Wow. And so I was pacing back and forth, just walking, reading it, and I'll close it, and I'll just, you know, I had the whole plan, mm -hmm. what I was going to do when his mother came to me. You know, what was I going to say? What was going to be my response? And I just thought, surely nobody would think it was me because so much time had passed, you know, from the incident to the killing. And um, he, he worked an odd job delivering papers, and he never delivered papers by himself. I used to go with him, and if I didn't go, his brother would go. So my plan was I still had his, his paper route. You know, when you're delivering papers, you know, you're out three, four o'clock in the morning. You know, most people. 
when they're on their routes. And so my plan was to make it look like a robbery. You know, shoot the brother, you know, give him a little leg wound or something, but to clearly take him out because I just thought he could not live any longer because nobody's going to treat me like that and keep on breathing as if nothing happened. So this night, as I was pacing, I heard a voice and I heard the voice say, don't do it. It was loud and clear. And I walked, I went to the door, opened up the door. Nobody was outside. I checked, went through the whole house, my apartment, I should say, you know, just to make sure, okay, all the TVs are off, the radio's not on. I went to the window, I lifted up the blinds. And I was like, I know I heard, don't do it. Yeah. And I kind of just chuckled it off, basically. And I was like, man, I'm really nutting up. You know, that's what I really thought personally. I'm really nutting up because I was in the mirror. You know, I was an actress. I could have got an Oscar. You know, I was in the mirror. You know, I had gone over the edge. You know, I was like, okay, when she calls me, when his mom called me, I'm going to act like this. And I was rehearsing. I was gone, really. And so I was just like, girl, you straight tripping. You know, now you hearing voices. And I just laughed it off. And I waited for a few minutes. And I went back to pacing. Went back to reading. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to meet him at so-and-so. With the, and just, and I heard it again, prophetess. Wow. But this time, it was different. It was as if, thank you, Jesus. It was as if somebody was standing right behind me. Hey, Robo Korea, she said, thank you, Lord. It was as if somebody was standing right behind me. And it was so clear in my ear, don't do it. But I felt it in my spirit. And I didn't even know what the spirit was at that time, okay? But I felt it in my spirit. And at that moment, I dropped to the floor. Hey, Robo Correa, wow. thank you, Jesus. At that moment, I dropped to my knees and I called on Jesus. Hey, Robo Korea, save me. Oh, Come on, you got to call on Jesus. Jesus. Because at that time I was going to I was going to church, but I really didn't know Jesus. That's I didn't right. know he could talk to you. I didn't know you can hear his voice. I yeah. people would talk about him, but I didn't have my own experience. So I didn't know him to be a rescuer. You know, I didn't know him to really be Lord and Savior in and over my yeah. life. And so when I fell to the floor and when I called on him, I was just weeping and rocking back and forth. And I was like, save me, help me. And at that moment, it was like my mind was clear. At that moment, when I say at that moment, like a twinkling of an eye, he'll come back. At that moment, my mind was clear. At that moment. And only Jesus can do that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Only Jesus can do that. I rededicated my life to Jesus Christ right there on that floor because he saved me from what I was getting ready to do. Yeah, I was getting ready to take somebody's life because I thought I was God. I thought that I was bigger than God. I wanted to take him off the throne and put me on the throne. And I wanted to make a decision who should live and who should die. Right. And so I thank God that he saved my life. You know, my son did not lose both of his parents yeah. because his father would have been dead. I would have been in the jailhouse. I, I, I cannot tell you. Words really cannot express how I would always, always be grateful yeah. for how he, he intervened. I really knew him to be. He rescued me that night. Yes, Lord. He yeah. rescued me. He is, he is a deliverer. And people yeah. don't even know Je Jesus. Oh, oh, he'll rescue you if you want to be rescued. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. He'll yes. rescue you. And I'm grateful. Yes, prophet. I'm grateful. people on here right now that they're going through domestic violence right now. And there's some people that don't know Jesus, even though they go to church. I want you to pray for them or however God is leading you to do. Yes, yes. If you, anyone listening live, let me say live and on the replay. Because I know people will watch the replay. Yeah. If you are listening live and on the replay, and even if you're going to church, but you really don't know Jesus, I want you to put me up in the box. Yeah. I'm even going to come back and look at the replay to see if anybody put me. If you put me, come on, I'm going to reach out to you. I'm going to connect with you. Yeah. Because 
we can go to church as a formality. People don't understand the body. We are the church, not the building. The building is the facilitate the facility that we go to worship God in. But if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, thank you. I see Taronda, a God blessing, blessing to you, woman of God. I'm waiting to see if there's anybody else. But if you don't know Jesus, if you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, that means you have to open up your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, that you understand that he died for you. Yes, the Bible says he's died for the whole world, but he had you in the back of his mind. Or maybe you did give your life to Jesus Christ, but you have turned your back on him. You are not walking with him. You don't have your own personal relationship. You're not in fellowship with him. Can I tell you that he is married to the backslider? Today can be your day. Salvation is today because I can tell you nothing is promised to us. Yes. Today can be your very last day on this earth. You breathe here and you breathe in heaven. Boom, just like that. But I promise you, God does not decide if you go to heaven or hell. We make that decision. We make that decision whether or not we go to heaven or whether or not we go to hell. So if there's anyone here, along with my sister, that wants to give their life to Jesus Christ, come on, let's say me one more time. And I said, I'm going to check the replay to see because the greatest decision you'll ever make in making your life is to ask Jesus to come into your heart. It's the greatest miracle. It's salvation. And I want everybody to understand, even the ones who are, have already given their life to Christ, that God is a good God. He's an Abba Father. And you can have your own personal relationship with him, that you don't have to depend on what everybody else says. And that he does talk. Come on, he does commune with you. He wants to commune with you. So is it anyone else? Let me see, Tyronda, I think I'm saying it right. I pray that I'm saying it right. Women of God, are you ready? Come on, say yes in the chat box so me and Prophetess Kim can pray along with you. And I want you to pray this simple prayer after me. Come on, man of God. It's the, it's the number one miracle yes. when you surrender and say, I no longer want to be left to my own devices, but I want to surrender my heart. It's more than just a song we sing, I surrender all. Yes. It's a heart issue. Surrender your life. Amen. Come on, you ready, woman of God? Come on, repeat after me. A Heavenly Father. I repent for all of my sins. And I thank you for your son, Jesus. I do understand that he gave his life for me. And now I ask Jesus to come into my heart, to come into my life. And I thank the Holy Spirit for guiding me the rest of my days, and the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. Praise God, woman of God. Hallelujah. We're so excited for you. Come on, the angels are rejoicing. Come on, one soul saved. We welcome you to the Thank kingdom God. of God. Anyone else watching the replay, we welcome you to the kingdom of God. And, and can, I say, can I say one more thing, prophetess? Yes, ma'am. If there is anybody watching, that is in a situation that is verbal abusive. Never think, well, it's just verbal. If there's someone that's in a, in a, in a situation that is emotional abusive, don't just think it's just emotional. Abuse is abuse, no matter what it looks like. No matter if it's, if it's insults, manipulation, regardless if it's verbal, keeping you away from your family, isolation, or physical abuse. Can I tell you that you need to get out and get to safety? Yes. There is more that God has for you. So for my, for my, for my Bible Christian brothers and sisters, you, we all know the story of, of King Saul and David, prophetess. Mm -hmm. And most of us know that story that Saul was in the position of the king. But he was authority figure. And he was abusive to David. Yes. It was abusive. So it wasn't a man and a woman, a wife and a husband. It was an authority figure. King Saul was abusive to David. Yes. But David fleed. 
Every time he had a chance, he had to get out. And so I can tell you that God loves you so much. He does not want any hurt or harm to come to you. So if you are in an abusive situation, you need to get to a place of safety. Yes. Maybe you're going to see how it's going to happen. Can I tell you, trust God. Trust him. Faith is when you walk by sight, when you walk by faith and not by sight. So when you take that step and say, Lord, I want you to rescue me, be my savior and rescue me out of this situation, God can do it. And can I tell you, if I have a man listening or a woman listen that is verbal abusive or physical abusive to their partner or to their wife, can I tell you, there is better in store for you too. Because that person needs help. The person that is the abuser, mm -hmm. you know, that's a control spirit. That's a violent spirit. That's a manipulation spirit. You need help too. And you need to ask for God. Come on, you need to ask Jesus yeah. to deliver you from that. It's not the end. And so when people say, oh, no one will never change, I disagree with that if you know Jesus. That's right. I disagree if that's you right. make a decision to change. Amen. You make a decision. You know what? I don't want to live my life like this anymore. I really do love her, but I don't know what happens. I, I just flip out. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to control it. You need help. But only Jesus can deliver you if you want to be delivered. So there's help for the victim and there's help for the one that's the abuser. Because mm -hmm. I'm not here, Prophetess Kimberly's not here to condemn anyone, but we want you to know that Jesus Christ is real. Deliverance is real. And no one has to settle. No one has to think there's no way out that you can't get out of your situation if you are the one that is committing the abuse or if you're the one that's receiving the abuse. That's right. Jesus can rescue you if you let him rescue you. Yes, and you put, uh, you get resources in our book. It calls yes. Me and you put uh, yes. the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Um, and yes. And you also gave two prayers, prayer for the abuser and prayer for the one that's being abused. Um Yes. Yeah, and then you put the website as well, which is uh, www.thehotline.org. And then the phone Amen. number you wrote is 1-800-799-7233. So these are actual uh, resources, additional resources. Uh, if you yeah. are being abused or if you need help, you know, because it's not the will of God for you to hit, hit nobody, to abuse anyone or to be abused and mm -hmm. stay in that because it's not safe you know you stay in a situation mm -hmm. it could cost you your life you know just like it you can. Brought up uh, Saul and David David fled when Saul was throwing those javelins at him he yes. was like I'm out of yes. here you know so we have yes. to use wisdom uh, in this process yes. Um, yeah I'm sorry I'll let you finish no I just say yes I'm agree abuse is abuse yeah abuse is abuse and if you don't get out it can cost you your life. Yes. The book is called It Cost Us Everything, but I'm still here. There's many women that are not still here because they didn't get out or they thought that this is the best I can do or they thought I can change them. We can't change anybody. Like I said, the person has to make a decision to change. The person has to make a decision. Yeah. So we don't want your life to be at stake. So you can get help if you want to get help. So we wanted to give those resources yes. for the hotline.org. They help abusers and they also help the victims that are being abused, both. Yes. And I just want to go ahead and pray. Um, I'm going to pray Amen. for the woman of God. I want to pray for the, the viewers and the replay viewers. Amen. I pray God's peace upon you. I pray wisdom yeah. upon you in Jesus' Amen. name. I pray that the Lord Amen. will order each and every one of our footsteps. If there's yes, any God. spirit of control and manipulation and that is in us, God, remove it out yeah. now in Jesus' name. If it's a spirit of rage and anger, God, get it out now yeah. in the name of Jesus. In God, the if there's Jesus. pride and jealousy and envy and strife, get yes, it out God. of us now in the name yeah. of Jesus. Thank Father, you, make us whole. God, 
If there's any emptiness in us, God, I pray that you fill every void in our hearts, in our minds, in the name of Jesus. Give us freedom now on this broadcast. Give us freedom now, God. Release your fire. Release your presence now in the name of Jesus. And God, I ask you, God, for discernment. If, Lord, if the enemy is planning and plotting to take us out, God, I ask you, God, to warn us in advance, God, so we can flee from danger. So we can flee in the name of Jesus from the attacks of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, yes, God, I just lift yes. up your servant. Yes. Not every ounce of virtue she has poured out, poured yes, back into God. her now. God, refresh her now. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes. and the word of the Lord for you is expansion. The Lord says, daughter, I yes. want to expand your territory. And God, yes, I thank God. you, Father God, for expanding her territory, God. And I thank yes, you, Father God. God, for even opening up more doors, God, for her to travel, thank God, you, outside of what she's yes. traveling. The Lord says he's going to increase thank your you, spirit Lord. of influence. And I thank you, Father God. Lord, I thank, thank you, God, you, for faithful team, a faithful team hey. around the woman of God. Yes, God. And I, God, I thank you, God, for Jesus. putting her with thank her heart's Jesus. desires in the name yes, of God. Jesus. And I just see a globe spinning. I see a globe spinning. Thank you, and Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for a globe uh, in front of me that's yes, spinning. God. And I thank you, God, that you're opening up new countries, God, for her. And God, yes, I thank God. you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I don't know if you ever thought about satellite radio or radio, but I just see like a, a radio yes. thing coming in front of me. And God, I thank you, God, for opening up the radio. And I, God, I even thank you, God, for the seeds. Yes, God. And God, I thank you, Father God, that you are sending people, God, to labor you, right now beside her. That, God, you are sending people to labor right beside her, God. Lord, and I thank Jesus. you, Father God. And it's almost like God is about to send you more people to lift up your arms to even help you. Yes, God. Continue to thank you, Jesus. More people. Yes. Well, you have been overlooked before and rejected. God is sending you people that doesn't have uh, ill motives concerning you he's gonna send you people yes that generally have your heart and god i thank you that you're gonna even you, send people to sow into her her vision in jesus mighty name amen thank you, lord Probably amen she has a webinar and amen. Uh, i received it thank you please sign up for her webinar she's doing some training uh for the armor bearers servant leaders sign up you know, many people, they want to be somebody's armor bearer because they think it's like, hey, you know, it's a good thing because I'm close to the pastor, the man of God, but it's more. Yes. Than so she's having some training. Please sign up. And if you are in uh, the Philly area where her church is at, please connect and tell us about your webinar one more time. And, uh, you know, your church. Yes. Yes, the God's armor bear. I served as an armor bear for many years. I served as the house prophet for many years under my spiritual parents when I was living in Atlanta. And what I've seen is a lot of people want the position. They may even be be called to that position, but they're not uh, prepared. They're not ready for it. They don't understand the sacrifice. And so it's called God's armor bear, the ultimate sacrifice that no one talks about. And so people see it from afar, like, oh, wow. But they don't know a lot of things that go on behind closed doors. And so people are getting beat up and bruised and battered on the battlefield because they really don't know what they signed up for. And so this class is two sessions. It's the same information. One is given on a weeknight and the other class is given on a Saturday. So April the 9th and the 16th is a Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then a Saturday class is Saturday, April the 13th, and that's at 11 a.m. So it's the same information is going to be given. It's for Ama Bears. It's for servant leaders. It's for people that know they are called to be in ministry. It's even for pastors, five-fold ministry leaders that are ready to start. They can start training their own people, but they don't know what to do as of yet. So it's for people who are ready to serve. It's for people that are ready to say, it's not about me, but it's about God. And it's about doing everything with the spirit of excellence, but you have to be equipped before you go out on the training field. So it's an awesome, it's an awesome webinar. It's so needed in the body of Christ and people need to be uh, equipped properly before they get in that position and then discover I'm way in over my head. You know, nobody told me about this Jesus. and that's what the class is for. Amen. It's only $28. I made it very reasonable and feasible for everyone. Some people that, you know, we spend that much for some of us on coffee, you know, yeah. for a week at, at Starbucks. Yeah. So it's only $28. Uh, you can sign up. You can go to my um, Facebook page and you'll see the link. Uh, Prophet Joy Martin on Facebook. It's paypal.me.forward slash Pastor Joy Martin 
$28. And that's is really simple. And get registered today. Amen. Amen. So I'm excited. So support the woman of God. She's going to put her uh, information also in the comment section. Uh, to Rhonda, we're going to send you some information. Uh, we have uh, for believers and um, Pastor Prophetess Joy is going to connect. Please get our new book. It cost me everything. And Amen. Connect with the woman of God. I love you. And I thank you so much, woman of God, for just uh, allowing God you. to use you today. Thank you. I, I thank God for you. You um, had a mighty vision that the Lord gave you. And a lot of times we have a vision. God gives us something and we don't follow through. Yeah. We don't do our part. And so because you heard the voice of the Lord, because you did what God told you to do, uh, you allowed other people to partner with you. And because of your obedience, thank you, Jesus, so many people are being blessed. So many people are being delivered and set free because people have made a decision to be transparent and to share all the things that they thought were the little dirty secrets. And God says, because you made a decision to be obedient to him, he is expanding your territory. God says that Jabez, uh, he is enlarging the tent pegs of your territory, woman of God. God says there's greater miracles that you haven't seen as of yet. The Lord says he's even going to send you help you need help on the back end and on the front end amen so god is going to send you the administration that you need behind behind scenes he's going to send someone that has your heartbeat he's going to send someone that can stay at your pace because you move like lightning yeah. you move like this and you move like this yeah. and so you need somebody that can roll like that so it's not frustrating to you so you can be effective and efficient in the kingdom of god then god is going to send you somebody that can travel with you that's been a heart's cry someone that can really go with you when you're traveling traveling out because more doors are open and the more you travel, the more you're like, I need somebody with me. I really, really need a team, not just one person and not just somebody running a book table, but somebody that can minister alongside with you, someone that can cover you and intercede for you. So God is sending the people along with you that has your vision, that has your heartbeat. They're not trying to take the attention, but they're, they're going to be there to support the woman of God. God says divine connections. I hear Jamaica. And I see <laughs> uh, the flag. Um, Jesus, I see a flag before me. I'm going to describe the flag. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, I think I know a country, but I'm going to describe the flag. It's a green flag. The circle is white and it's yellow. It's yellow and green, but the whole flag is green. And it's a big circle on it. And it's green and yellow. God says that country is yours. There is favor for you in that country. There is divine connections for you. The year 2019 through 2022, the Lord says it's going to be new territories. If you do not already have your passport, get your passport now. Make sure your team has their passport. So when the time comes, there's no delay. I come against the spirit of delay. There's been delay. There was setback for a while, a while. So that's why you've been like an acceleration, an acceleration, acceleration move. So God says he is enlarging your territory, not only low locally, not only in the ground in America, but overseas. I see you crossing water. I also see Cuba. Ooh, I see you doing things down in South America. Jesus. There's going to be a great door that's going to open Jesus. to you if it has not already. God is going to give you favor. You will connect with people that really do love you. Thank you, Jesus. And for the ones, and, and God says, because your heart has been pure and motive, your motives have been pure. Even the ones who came up against you, even the ones who have talked about you and against you mm -hmm. behind closed doors, and you knew about it and you kept your eyes focused on Jesus. When you could have exposed people, God says he's going to bless you greatly. Amen. He's going to bless you publicly and privately because you're a mature woman of God. And when they were throwing daggers at you, you were still praying. When they were throwing daggers at your back, you were still praying and blessing them. Yeah, so God yeah. is going to send you people that are not jealous of you. They're not envious of you. There's no hidden dark secret that I despise her, but people who really do love you and they yeah, love the anointing that's on your life, but they love you as a woman of God, that yeah. they're not always concerned. You have been surrounded. Lord, I thank you for removing everybody out of her life. 
that means no good for the woman of God. Everyone that wants to use her and abuse her or trying to see what they can get from the woman of God, I thank you, Lord. Now you're going to have people who are around you who love you as the woman of God and not just what you can do. Yes. for them. It's a new season for you, woman of God. It's a new season. I'm excited for you. I celebrate you. And I can't wait to see all the things. I can't wait to hear the testimonies and yes. see the pictures and the videos of the traveling and the great miracles that you haven't even you you just on it. You just you just tipping the iceberg. You haven't even <laughs> gone over to the full realm what God has in store for you. So I am yeah. ecstatic for you. I'm ecstatic for you. Amen. Amen. I'm I was saying everything. He was all in my prayer closet. So much confirmation. Amen. Amen. To I God be the glory. It. My God. I, to I, God be I, the I, glory. I will inbox you to tell you. <laughs> yes. Amen. Yes. To God. I can't wait to hear. To God be the glory. You got your confirmation. And I'm excited. I'm excited for you. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I love you. And it's talking Love you, here. too. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get off. All right, God All right, woman of God. Be blessed. Be blessed, everyone. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.